everyone, welcome back to Prime News. It is now a Sunday show. That's right, it's our first ever show on a Sunday. And now Prime News, if you guys remember, used to be a daily news show. Well, now it's actually going to be a weekly news recap that goes up every single Sunday, hopefully by 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. That is the goal. Hopefully this first episode launched by then. It got recorded a little late due to some, uh, my dog ran away. Let's just, let's put it that way. Link, my new dog, he ran away. We got them back, though. It's all good. So let's get right into the news. And our first story is actually going to be about sales that are still going on with Nintendo Switch and Nintendo Switch games for Cyber Monday. A lot of these sales are live right now. Uh, some of them might not be. Now, you can go to various websites. But uh, we're going to start with Best Buy because they actually had a lot of the best deals on games specifically. So let's just go right down the list. First up, they have NBA 2K20 for Switch for $29.99. They have Super Mario Party for $39.99. Breath of the Wild for $39.99. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle for $14.99. Super Mario Odyssey for $39.99. Splatoon 2 for $39.99. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze for $39.99. Mario Tennis Aces for $39.99. FIFA 20 for $27.99, Spiral Reignited Trilogy for $24.99, Crash for $19.99, Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy, that is, Diablo 3 for $24.99. Um, at GameStop, they're actually still doing a $25 gift card with the purchase of a Switch Lite. They were doing that on Black Friday. It's still going on right now. Um, Amazon does have the $299 Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Bundle that was supposed to be Black Friday only. They actually still have that bundle in stock and you can buy it right now. Now, there's obviously sales at a lot of other websites. You can go to Target and Walmart and all these places and find some good deals. A lot of the game prices, though, are going to be around the pricing that Best Buy put up. So that's why I kind of stuck with their pricing. I'll have links to all of the individual games down below. They are affiliate links. So if you do click on them and happen to make a purchase through it, I do get a small kickback. Doesn't increase the price. Just need to throw that out there because... I mean, it's technically, you could argue this is a form of advertising, but whatever, it's prime news. Let's get into the next story. Capcom might still have a couple games to reveal before the end of this year because they are joining Jump Festa in Japan, which happens on December 21st and December 22nd. Now, two of the games we already know uh, that they will have playable because they announced four playable games. One of them is going to be Iceborne, the Monster Hunter World uh, expansion playable on PlayStation 4. They're also going to have the Mega Man Zero slash ZX Collection, which is going to be available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch, playable at this event. And then, yeah, that's it. The two other playable games they announced, they haven't actually told us what they are, and that's where all the speculation comes in. Are we going to see a Breath of Fire collection? I know some people are waiting for a collection for that. Capcom obviously likes to release collections for their classic games, so that's something that could be on dock. Also, if you guys remember way back when, they said like in an interview that they were going to make a Monster Hunter for Switch, like that wasn't Monster Hunter World and wasn't just a port from 3DS, hasn't happened yet. So, hey, with Iceborne being there, is this where they're going to announce a new Monster Hunter for Switch? I don't know. Seems pretty exciting. Seems pretty enticing. And we always can hope. Uh, obviously, Capcom has been called Crapcom in the past for some of their games, but they're on a little bit of a roll this year. Uh, we all know about the Resident Evil 2 remake that went over really well. So, hey, we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm hoping for good things, and I'm hoping we get something that's coming to Switch. So we got sales for a week back for Japan, and yes, Switch is dominating again. You know, it's been dominating all year, nothing new, so about 180,000 units. What's interesting, though, is that actually makes up 95% of the total hardware sales in Japan for the week. That's pretty crazy. Uh, beyond all of that, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield is still at the top sales spot with 380,000 or so. But actually, the real story about Pokemon Sword and Shield isn't that it's at the number one sales spot. It's that it has now sold 1.7 million units. This is important because that means in just nine days, it has outsold Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu's cumulative sales to date. Now, these are just physical sales where it sold only 1.6 million. So, yeah, obviously we know what fans in Japan were waiting for when it came to the Pokemon series. They're waiting for this eighth generation. And even more surprising, maybe not if you paid a lot of attention to sales in Japan, is Ring Fit Adventure has jumped back up to the number two spot and sold 26,000 units. Now that might not sound that impressive, but Nintendo actually had to come out on their official Twitter account in Japan and apologize to consumers for mass shortages on Ring Fit Adventure last week. 
Yes, folks, Ring Fit Adventure is essentially their new Wii Fit. It is that popular in Japan, and they cannot keep the thing in stock. So, man, oh man, um, I might have to pick up Ring Fit Adventure myself. It's actually, I'm having a hard time finding it locally around here. A lot of places I have it sold out around here, too. So maybe it was a popular item this Black, this Black Friday. I don't know. I didn't go out shopping this, this time around. So, yeah, um, are you guys playing Ring Fit Adventure? Let me know in the comments below. So we reached the midpoint of Prime News today, and I'm actually going to add a new section into Prime News I never had before. And this is more of a creator update. Basically, what have I been watching this week from my favorite content creators that I think you guys should be checking out? And we're going to start with my boy Arlo. Yes, that awesome blue puppet. He released a video this week about Retro Studios, kind of looking at what's happening at Retro Studios and what he was able to dig up. And uh, yeah, the, the picture isn't very pretty uh, and could even give you some pause and some concern for Metroid Prime 4. So uh, go ahead and check out that video again, link down in the description. Uh, next up we have Spawn Wave, who explored why a Google Chromecast Ultras are overheating when you use Google Stadia. Um, to kind of give the long and the short of it, they, they're using the plastic shell as a heat dissipator, which is not a very good heat dissipator. Um, I think he literally like glued on heat sinks to it. And I don't know, it's a pretty crazy video. Um, you should go check that out if you're actually curious on some wackiness going on uh, with Google Stadia. Because, hey, some people do actually care about what's happening with game streaming. And Google Stadia gets some things right, but a lot of things wrong. And this is kind of one of those things. Um, Player Essence has put out an Alien Isolation gameplay video about a half hour long. Uh, it is the Nintendo Switch version that comes out on December 5th. Uh, so this is actually early access and, and viewing of, of this game on Switch. It was recently announced for Switch. So, uh, yeah, you look forward to that coming out on the 5th and you get a chance to see what it looks like. It's one of the best Alien games in the whole franchise. So... Uh, pretty excited to have that come to Switch on the 5th. Uh, Wolf then put out a video about fixing the Nintendo Switch kickstand. Now, uh, it, I'm not going to say there's a lot of new information in this, but if you're at this point now where you own a Switch and you're having a problem with the kickstand, it's worth checking out because he tries out a few different types of, of kickstand replacements uh, to try to fix the issue, and you can kind of see where he sits on the best replacement, the easiest replacement, or the most permanent replacement, whatever kind of replacement you're looking for. He goes over all of that, so why not check that out? Uh, next up, Peanut Butter Gamer wrapped up his annual Zelda month, which he does every November, every single year, and he did it by exploring if Twilight Princess is actually an underrated Zelda game because he actually rated it pretty low last year, and uh, he's, he's seen a similar sentiment, and he's wondering, are people just overlooking Twilight Princess these days? Pretty big deal. Next up are some of my favorite group of creators in the Easy Allies crew. Uh, they released a new episode of Box Peak, and if you don't know what Box Peak is, you're really missing out. You're seeing a small clip of it right now. Pretty fun stuff. Very Pokemon kind of inspired, but it's from the mind of Kyle Bossman. If you uh, know who that guy is, you know it's it, it, it's pretty wacky and and. and insane let's just put it that way and last up we got fanatics 4 uh you talked about how the eShop on switch needs upgrading and it's actually wasting its potential this is an old topic that's been rehashed over the past few years but he brings up a lot of new ideas new solutions to current ongoing problems so i definitely think it's worth a look Next up, we actually have a rumor. This is about Metroid. And uh, basically, it comes from a Twitter user called Leaky Panda, who I'm going to let you know right now um, has a pretty spotty track record. Uh, they've gotten some stuff right, but that was back in 2018. They've gotten nothing right in 2019. So at least anything that they're the direct source on. And even in this rumor, it's kind of a... They're only one part of the rumor you can really credit them uh so let's explain this uh basically they said there's three metroid games coming out you know, or in development for switch two of them coming out in the next uh two years one of those being uh, metroid prime 4 and uh the metroid prime trilogy in hd uh, if you remember game informer actually leaked the hd stuff nintendo announced metroid prime 4 themselves so they're not really the source on that but they are saying that a Super Metroid remake in the style of Samus Returns is also in the works for Switch. That is the first we've ever heard of anything like this. So if that is true, Leaky Panda would be the first and only source on this at this point. Uh, I think that would be really interesting. I think it would be a quick game for them to produce and they could have really any of their studios make that. They're not going to need Retro Studios or or anything like that to be the, the, the ones heading that one up. So, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm... We haven't had a lot of Metroid or really any Metroid on Switch yet, so 
I'm all for getting a Metroid Overload over the next two to three years. So I mean, let's do it. Let, let, let's let's get all the Metroid. Why not? Let's let's go. Metroid Mania. Let's do it. We had the Euro Luigi. Let's have the Euro Metroid. Why not? The Pokemon Company is taking legal action against leakers for Sword and Shield. Uh, they don't. They haven't actually found every single leaker if you actually go through the lawsuit. But they have narrowed down the ones who were leaking the strategy guides down to four users on Discord. And they are seeking, obviously, financial compensation and a whole bunch of um, other legal mumbo-jumbo along the ways to kind of punish the people who leaked the strategy guides uh and they were trying to go after the people who leaked the roms as well they just don't have any exact names yet and i guess the idea of the lawsuit isn't so much that the pokemon company needs the money that the pokemon company uh needs anything but they want to put fear in people from leaking pokemon in the future see pokemon games have had a long history of leaks happening all over the place whether it's the full roms coming out i remember you know pokemon moon being fully playable like a week before the game came out because a rom leak that actually happened again this time except it was only a few days before the games came out um you know guides have leaked there's just leaks all over the place and the pokemon company's finally like look we've had enough we're, we're gonna take legal action and make it so people think twice about leaking things again uh, especially using something like discord where you could technically trace the account to an email to an ip address and figure out who exactly is at fault so uh yeah if you're a leaker for this stuff if you enjoy getting your guides early or early access to the games from you know someone who owns a game store or something uh just know that the pokemon company is not taking things lightly anymore and uh you could get in some serious legal and financial trouble. So Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3 Special Edition are coming to Switch. All of them were announced quite recently. And uh, they're releasing individually. And there's been a little bit of a controversy around what they are doing with these games. Not because they're just digital only. I think obviously everyone would love to have a physical version of it. But they're older games. Getting them digital only. It's whatever. But uh, they say, stated outright that uh, the first game in particular would never be available physically. Uh, and then they're putting together a, a three-pack of the games physically in Japan. And there's a cartridge, and the cartridge actually has the first game on the cart. The two other games are digital download codes. Now, we've seen this done before with third-party games especially. And it's always a disappointment that all three games aren't on the cart or there's not multiple carts but uh, they also lied because they said they would do this, and then they went and did it anyways. Now, this is only releasing in Japan. It is technically cheaper to buy the three-pack than to buy the games individually. And yes, if it does well in Japan, chances are this three-pack will come to the West. But then do we really even want this three-pack in the West? Because what we really want are all three of the games on a single cartridge. And if you look at the file sizes of Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3, there's no reason to think at lower resolution, shrunk down for the Switch, that it couldn't all fit on one cartridge anyways, and they could charge 50 bucks or whatever for it all. So I honestly, it's disappointing that they lied, but it's even more disappointing that we are getting a physical version, kind of, that's only of the first game, uh, not of the second and third, um, I don't know when third parties are going to stop with this practice. I understand the cartridges are expensive and to put them all onto one cart, you're going to have to use a bigger cartridge, maybe even the 32 gigabyte one, but then you could just increase the price of the three pack and people might be willing to pay that increased price, that extra 10 bucks so they could have it all physically. So I, it, it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation and uh, whatever. I mean, we're getting Devil May Cry, and I guess that's the biggest news out of this is regardless of the kerfuffle with the physical release or whatever, um, hey, it's a game we're getting. Three games we're getting. So that's uh, that, that's all good news in my book. Anyways, that's going to do it for this week's Prime News. I know, not a lot of comedy. Just trying to get back into the flow of things here. Uh, just stuck to the news, stuck to my bullet points. I got a lot of stuff I got to get going here at the channel, and this is just one of those things. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoyed this weekly recap, let me know down in the comments below. If there's anything you think I could do to improve on Prime News every single week, let me know, and I will try to include the improvements every single week and make the show better and better as we go along, include bigger and bigger stories. Uh, and, you know, heck, that, that little creator middle thing. Maybe you guys want to suggest creators I should be paying more attention to that are making some unique content that you want me to uh, uh, share to the masses out there. So I don't know. Thank you all for tuning in. I am Nintendo Robo Jance from Nintendo Prime. You just got done watching Prime News. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys all in the next video.